Hello and welcome back to World 360. On Thursday, the US rolled out the red carpet for leaders of Pacific Island nations in its first ever US Pacific Island Country Summit. There are roughly 14 independent Pacific Island nations located in a part of the world that doesn't usually get much attention, the Central and the South Pacific Ocean. Now, these are countries that are mainly clusters of islands, and some names might sound familiar, such as Fiji, Solomon Islands, the Federated States of Micronesia, and many others. So, why is it that the US is suddenly taking stock of this region? The most obvious answer is an attempt to stem China's growing influence in the region. Just listen to US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's remarks while he kicked off the US Pacific Island Country Summit. What I hope that you take away from these engagements is that the United States shares your vision and we are committed to help realize it. It's a vision that recognizes that only by working together can we actually tackle the biggest challenges of our time that confront all of our citizens, from combating the climate crisis and health emergencies, to promoting economic opportunity, to preserving a free and open Indo-Pacific where every nation, no matter how big, no matter how small, has the right to choose its own path. According to a report in the Washington Post, the Biden administration plans to invest more than 860 million US dollars in expanded programs to aid the Pacific Islands, which covers climate change, recovery from the coronavirus pandemic, illegal fishing and technology investments. Upgrading submarine cables is also reportedly on the agenda. The report also mentioned that all the visiting leaders endorsed an 11-point declaration of vision committing to joint endeavors. Now, this is interesting given the critical statements issued by one of the Pacific Island countries ahead of this summit. I'm talking about the Solomon Islands, which in fact inked a security deal with Beijing earlier this year. Ahead of the summit, Solomon Islands had indicated that it would not sign the declaration. And earlier this week at the UN General Assembly, the country's Prime Minister, Manase Sogavare, said his country had been unfairly targeted since formalizing relations with China. We have been subjected to a barrage of criticism, misinformation and intimidation, so Gavare had said. Solomon Islands had been unfairly targeted since formalizing diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China just over three years ago. We have been subjected to a barrage of unwarranted and misplaced criticisms, misinformation and intimidations that threatens our democracy and sovereignty. Now, over the past few years, we've been hearing of how the U.S. is refocusing efforts in the Indo-Pacific region, as evident with the Quad, military drills with allies in the South China Sea, Pelosi's recent Taiwan visit and more. But now we're seeing how the U.S.-China rivalry is playing out specifically in the Pacific and among these island nations. Keep in mind that this summit comes at a time when many Pacific island nations are suffering from drought and many are still recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic. Some experts, however, have argued that the U.S.'s efforts to engage with the region have not kept pace with those of China. Historian, author, analyst and commentator Patricia O'Brien wrote in a recent piece for The Diplomat on how the U.S. initially did not invite all Pacific Island nations, leaving out the Cook Islands and French territories. They were eventually invited after protests from other countries, but the oversight fueled skepticism about the U.S.'s ability to meet the Pacific nations on their terms, O'Brien had written. It could also be argued that China worked to build relationships with these Pacific Island nations over the last decade, while the U.S. was preoccupied with fighting wars in the Middle East and other conflicts. But it appears some countries aren't entirely ready to embrace China either. In fact, in May and June this year, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi toured eight of the island nations. But before his trip, the Chinese government had floated a draft five-year action plan among the ten island nations, calling for cooperation in the fields of policing, security, trade, data networks and cybersecurity. However, the Federated States of Micronesia went on to oppose this document. The president of the island nation had in fact sent a letter to leaders of other nations warning that signing deals with Beijing would threaten the security of the region and bring about a new Cold War. Keep in mind that the Federated States of Micronesia has diplomatic ties with China but shares closer economic and security ties with the US as it became a United Nations trusteeship under US administration in 1947. 
Now, what might help U.S. in its rivalry with China vis-a-vis -vis the Pacific Island nations is that one of Washington's quad partners, Australia, has been a longtime ally of the countries in this region. As a Bloomberg report points out, these countries have long-running ties with Australia and New Zealand. For example, when violence sparked by political tensions broke out in the Solomon Islands in 2003, it was Australia that stepped in and led a regional police force to help restore order. Thank you so much for watching. This is Pia Kishankuti for The Print. Do subscribe to The Print.in and follow us on social media.